Thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. This video is going to explain Siamese neural networks for one-shot image recognition. To motivate the idea of one-shot classification, imagine a data set where you only have one basketball image, one baseball image, and one polar bear image, or at least one label for each one. And you might use some kind of unsupervised or self-supervised learning with other images to try to align the labels. But in this case, we're going to focus on how would you classify this new basketball image into a basketball if we only have one labeled image in each sample. And this is also true for speech recognition and all sorts of other areas of deep learning. So one of the biggest applications of one-shot classification in, uh, like in industry applications is facial recognition. And this idea is like, say you go to the gym and you take your uh, picture, the uh, classification model that might just recognize your gym membership by your face would only have one labeled sample to learn your identity from. So another motivation is imagine these data sets like ImageNet that has 1.2 million images. This t tends to work really well for visual representation learning, but imagine constructing a data set like that for yourself for your like hobby project or something like that. It's really c totally unfeasible. So further motivation is as, as the algorithms advance and move towards a general intelligence system, we'd imagine that they should have some kind of reasoning system for one-shot classification. It shouldn't necessarily be just entirely uh, massively data driven in the sense that it's got thousands of images of each class. It's just so much prior information and you'd want a general intelligence system to be able to reason for itself rather than just encode tons and tons of prior information into it. So these are two papers that use sort of a similar idea to the Siamese neural network. This uh, temporal cycle consistency learning is going to compare the intermediate embeddings of video frames and this uh, unsupervised data augmentation technique is going to compare the predicted label of images after being augmented versus not being augmented, but you could also imagine comparing the internal uh, feature representations of each image as well. So this is the Siamese network. The idea is that you have this network and this network, which are the same exact network. So this network is a clone of this network, and they're both past image one, image two, and then they learn a distance function between the two vector representations produced by the same exact neural network. So when they add uh, convolutional neural network layers onto it, you see how they uh, process this image through a series of convolutions until they eventually reach a feature vector. And so they're going to use a metric to compare the feature vector between different images, and they're going to train it on pairs of the same image and different image. So you might pass two basketballs through and label as the same image, or you might pass a basketball and a polar bear and label them as different. So at the end of this, the uh, distance layer is going to be removed and replaced with a classification layer that will be trained to uh, do the classification task with only one labeled image per, per class. So this is the learned distance metric. And the idea here is that you pass uh, image H1 and H2 through the Siamese network, which is the same exact convolutional network. And they produce these two vectors. So one idea would be an L2 distance where you do like this minus this squared plus this minus this squared plus, you know, dot, 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 plus this minus this squared. And then you take the square root of that sum. But instead of that, they're going to have an alpha parameter that weights the uh, importance of each, uh, f like of each component of the vector. So imagine if this has like an 80% weight, this has like a 2% weight, and say this has like a 90% or I don't know, some like, they don't have to be like a soft max, like as in they all sum up to one, but they... I'll have a different weight for each uh, for each component of the learned vectors between the two images. So additionally in their experiment, they're going to use hyperparameter optimization. And this is like a really interesting component of using deep neural networks is that you can optimize, is that they're so sensitive to the uh, optimization of these subtle hyperparameters, like learning rate, the layer-wise momentum term, which is a parameter on the optimizer used to do the gradient descent updates the regularization penalty, and they even go as far as doing the convolutional filter sizes from 3x3 to 20x20. 20 20. I've never seen 20x20 20 20 before. And then the number of filters in each layer, they also test with this, and, oh sorry, this is supposed to be 256. And they also test with how many fully connected units are in that final vector used to compare the distance between images. So the Omniglot data set, this is the academic data set used to benchmark one-shot classification. And there's really five tasks, but in the, and they put, published a recent paper where they say uh, like a three-year report on Omniglot, and, there are so, and the authors of the Omniglot data set are a little disappointed that only this first task has been focused on so heavily, but it is still an interesting task. So we'll, we'll just focus on this first task of uh, you're given these different uh, characters, 
and you've there's 50 alphabets and then in each alphabet there's usually 15 to 40 different like characters and then 20 different people draw the characters and so that's all you have to uh, use as labels to classify a new image of a character and which character in the alphabet it's the most similar to. So these are the results that they get with the uh, Siamese network using affine distortions to mod, like do data augmentation on their data set. So you see that they actually are, the is, task is kind of close to solved. They've done a pretty good job with it. But then again, it is only like uh, 105 by 105 grayscale images. So there's not that much uh, complexity to the image data set. So this is another thing they show is that the features learned by the Siamese networks. I'm not really a huge fan of this kind of visualization, but they, they uh, reason that they think that this is uh, like fine grained characteristics and then global features, but I, I'm, I'm still not really sold on this visualization technique. So then again, in their uh, technique, they present how their Siamese network compares with the other techniques of doing omniglot classification. So they, the humans achieve this score and then uh, the original authors of the paper proposed this uh, hierarchical Bayesian program learning. And so the difference between this, which outperforms convolutional Siamese network, is that this has a sense of like a generative model. It has like a sense of how the, uh, how the like characters are constructed, how they're drawn. So I didn't really read too much into this, but this is able to do it without any kind of generative model. So thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. I was inspired to make this video from a blog post on NShot Learning, Learning More with Less Data from uh, Floyd Hub, which will be linked in the description of this video. So please subscribe if you're interested in upcoming videos on one-shot learning. If you're interested in learning more about NShot Learning, which contains zero-shot learning, the one-shot learning technique discussed in, uh, in this video, as well as few-shot learning, I really recommend uh, checking out this blog post from Floyd Hub on NShot Learning. Thanks for watching this video on Siamese Networks. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.